Hello there. I'm so happy that you joined me today. This is Vision Eternity Ministries, and my name is Lee Klein. Jesus is preparing us for his return. He's calling us to be his bride without blemish, without spot or wrinkle. Maybe you're thinking, well, that's too hard. I can't be perfect. But you don't have to be. Because Jesus is just going to, with your permission, recreate you in his likeness, and you're going to be mature. That's really what his um, idea is, of perfect is, is to be mature, to be his bride, to be committed to him. And we're going to talk about that today. Let's acknowledge him. Jesus, you're so good to us. We thank you. We praise you that you're teaching us your way and that you're getting rid of all of our blemishes. You're the only one who can teach us your way, and we love you and praise you for it. We know that you love us when you instruct us. We give you all the praise and all the glory in your name. Revelation 3.19, he said that. He instructs, he disciplines those that he loves, because if we're not shown the way, we're not going to be able to get there. Because so much, you know, we live by our own thinking, our own opinion. We think we know it, but we really don't until we sit at his feet and find out. And so he loves you and he wants to correct you so you know the truth and so you can be that bride without blemish. So you can look like him. So you can stand before him that day and look just beautiful to him because you've matured and love. That's really what it's about. It's learning how to love, learning how to live in the kingdom of God. In order to do that, we got to trust him. Romans 10, 9. If you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart you believe, you adhere to trust and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then it goes on to say, for the heart of a person believes, trusts, and adheres to and relies on Christ, and is so justified and declared righteous, acceptable to God, and with the mouth he confesses, declares openly and speaks out freely his faith, and confirms his salvation. And then I love verse 11. Scripture says that no man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies, and trusts in him, will ever be put to shame. No, never. And I wanted to read that to you because a lot of people say this prayer with really no meaning or understanding. And then they think that they're going to heaven and they go back to live their own life. But it says we have to adhere to, rely on, and trust in him. And if we do that, if we get out on the water because it takes faith to do that, we will never be disappointed. And so as we grow in him, he starts teaching, revealing to us that we are called to lay down our life for him. And what really Jesus wants me to ask you today is, will you marry him? When you say that prayer that we pray, instead of walking off the other way, will you say, I do? Will you put everything aside for him? Will you commit to be his bride without spot or wrinkle, even though you don't know how it's going to happen? Wait, can you have faith that he can change you? And he tells us how to do that um, as we start following him. And I want to read this to you, Matthew 16, 24. Jesus said to his disciples, now a disciple is a Christ follower. If you call yourself a Christian, you're calling yourself a disciple. If anyone desires to be my disciple, let him deny himself, disregard, lose sight, and forget himself and his own interests. So when you said that prayer, you, you never had any idea that he was going to say this to you. But as you let him recreate you in his likeness, and, and you put yourself aside, you're really learning how to love. And of course, we can't be his disciple if we don't know how to love the correct way. We think we know what love is in the world. You can listen to people talk about what they think love is and what they don't think love is all the time. But really, Jesus teaches us love as we apply his word, as we trust and rely on him, even though it doesn't make any sense what he's telling you to do, even though it seems too hard. When we just commit to him, when you say, I do, when you say that prayer and say, I'm going to commit to you, I'm going to be your bride without spot or wrinkle, and just believe that he can do that in you, he will. 
And so he's saying, no one can be my disciple unless they deny themselves. Now, remember, Jesus denied himself. He said to the Father, is there any other way? And, of course, your will, Lord. And that's what we have to say sometimes when we're following him. We're going to be saying, is there any other way? Is there any other way? Do I really have to do this love thing? Because it hurts. You know, I often think of sometimes, um, although a lot of time, lots of times in my life, how I'm rejected and I have to get back up. Because if they knock me over and, and just put me out and I have to get back up and say, I forgive you. Jesus said seven times, 77 times a day. And that's what his being his disciple is about. It's not about you. He takes care of you. He loves you. He pulls you back up. He's the one who's saying, you can do it. My power, my strength is in you. You can do this. So you got to forget about yourself and your own interests, and you take up your cross and you follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me, conformed wholly to my example, in living and if need be, in dying. This is an Amplified Classic Bible, so we get all kinds of extra ideas of what he's saying. Will you be his disciple? Will you put your own interests aside and start thinking about what he's thinking about? Do you have any idea what he's going through? You won't have any idea what he's going through unless you sit with him and you know him and you look at the word and you start applying what he tells you to do. And then he starts the things he's telling you to do. And then he starts revealing himself to you. In 2 Peter 3, 9, he said he's long suffering as he's waiting for us to get ready to repent and change our way to love because it's not as well that one should perish. And you know, when you love, then... Um, Others will love. It's catchy. It's catchy. When you love, you actually melt a person's heart, especially if they don't deserve it. You just love them anyway. You don't, you know, call them out for everything. You just love them. You forgive them. Even before you decide you're going to forgive, even before an assault is made. Whoever is bent on saving his own life, his comfort and security here, shall lose eternal life, and whoever loses his life in comfort and security here for my sake shall find everlasting life. What's he saying? Your comfort, your security, maybe it's your stuff. Maybe it's being that prideful person that doesn't let anybody walk all over you, doesn't let anyone be that rug, I'm uh, turn you into that rug they wipe their feet on, or however that saying goes. You, you you might look foolish to some people. You might look like um, you're letting them take advantage of you, but what you're doing is loving them and really actually planting seeds in their heart so they can know the God kind of love. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life, his blessed life in the kingdom of God? Or what would a man give as an exchange for his blessed life in the kingdom of God? Son of man is going to come in his glory. I'm going to wait with that. So what what would you have to have to give up eternal life? The rich young ruler had to have his stuff. He walked away from Jesus. He said, give away your stuff, and then you'll have heavenly. You'll have that heavenly life. You'll have riches, eternal riches. I think how the message Bible will put it. But you're giving away, what you're really doing is giving away the world for eternal life. Whatever in between you and Jesus, whatever is your God, and really caring about what he cares about, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, is caring about what he cares about, being a part of his life. And that's what he's asking you to do. Will you marry me? Will you be a part of my life? Will you be a part of the crisis that I'm going through? so that all can have eternal life? Will you partner up with me and go for me? Will you forget about trying to figure out what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and what you're going to wear, and just let me provide for you as you go and you be my hands and my feet? Will you do that? We're in a rat race on the wide path, figuring out what we're going to do, what what we're going to be when we grow up, living really completely um, separated from Jesus. 
Whereas if you put your life aside, you're going to see his way. You're going to see what he created you to do, created you to do. You're going to be a part of his life. You're going to have emotions for him as he does for you. You're going to care about what he's going through. You're going to care about what he cares about. <clears throat> and you will be rewarded. Actually, he said to the disciples when they said, well, who can be saved? Because Jesus is asking him to give away all his stuff so that he could have eternal life. The disciples are saying, we left our houses. We left it's for you. And Jesus said, yeah, and in this lifetime, whatever you give up for the sake of the gospel, you will have returned to you a hundredfold. And so you're not really giving up, you're gaining. We talked about it the other day. If you work for something, it's too hard to give it up. It's too hard to give in the kingdom of God so you can get back, pressed down, shaken together, and running over because you work so hard to get it. But when Jesus gives it to you, when the kingdom principles add on to you, it's easier to give it because you know, you get it. You know that his system is going to work for you. Given will be given unto you, pressed out and shaken together and running over. Anyway, in verse 27, I started to read, The Son of Man is going to come in his glory, majesty, and splendor, and his Father with his angels, and they will render account and reward every man in accordance to what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there's some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I just want to touch on this a little bit. Um, I'm just mind is so many I hear say that works is thinking you got to do something for your salvation. And we just read all you have to do is believe. But believing is trusting and relying on Jesus. Trust and rely on him that you can give up your life, for instance. You can give up your life. You can be that bride with spot, without spot or blemish. You can give all your stuff away and earn heavenly wealth instead or have heavenly wealth instead. So really, there is a work to do, and that work is to believe the kingdom of God is taken by force. And when you believe it, it involves your faith, which involves action. And so he said, you will be rewarded. You will be rewarded. There is a work involved. Jesus said, I'm going to go, and you're going to do my work. You're going to do greater things than I did. And so we have things to do in God's kingdom to prepare Jesus for Jesus' return. We, we have a part in him not willing to let one person perish. You are to love your neighbor. That can be a work. It's sometimes very hard to love those. Um, it is very hard to love those who don't love you back. And Jesus said, if you love those who love you, what reward is there in it? So we have lots of work to do. And Jesus is saying today, will you marry me? When you say that prayer, you're really saying, I do. When I asked him what I was talking about today, that's what I heard him say, I do. Will you say, I do? I will marry you. I will give up my life for you. I'll put it aside for you. I'm committed to be your bride without spot or wrinkle. I'm engaged with you. I'm going to let all my other, my other gods go. I'm just going to let them go. Well, what are other gods? Could be your stuff. Could be food. It could be just having to be recognized. God will show you your God. Get it out of the way. Give it up. Let it go. Put your life aside for him. He's coming. He's calling us to be ready. So often we think we're ready. But right here, Jesus expounded even more on how to be ready. And he's saying today, will you say I do? Till death do you part. For better, for worse, to love and to cherish, cherish. If you're ready to commit to Him, pray that prayer with me. Let's pray. Jesus, we believe you got on the cross for us and that you were raised from the dead. And we trust and rely on you, and we are willing to declare our faith. We know that you're knocking on the door of our heart, and we're we're asking you to come on in. And you said, if we heed your voice, 
you'll live on the inside of us. And so we commit to heed your voice right now, Lord. We commit to be engaged to you, to be there for you as you are there for us. Jesus, he has a word for us. I am here for you. Just turn around and you will see me. Nothing is too hard for me, saith the Lord. With men, things are impossible. With God, all things are possible. Turn to me, and I will render you well. I will reward you. I will give. I will give you whatever it is that you need. You don't have to work for it. Just be there for me. I long for you to love me. I love you, saith the Lord. Well, that was cool. Thank you, Jesus. That was so awesome. He's so good to us. So if you said that prayer, you know, I would love it so much if you let me know. And get on your knees every day and just surrender to him. Just be there for him. Don't live by how you feel. But look at those promises. Listen to what he's saying in your heart. Declare your faith as you said you would. Thank you so much for listening today. God bless you.